Welcome to sunny One Haven, Florida. I'm Lane Dog Bowers, and I want you to realize that you are greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved. Today, I want to talk to you about courage. You know, I was studying, and they, they were talking today uh, in, in this uh, course that I've been studying about Alcatraz and how, you know, Alcatraz was supposedly like the greatest prison with the most hardened criminals. And as far as we know, no one ever escaped from Alcatraz. You know, but now tourists can go visit it, things like that. And, uh, you know, the amazing thing, though, is I want to read you something that was written by a pastor, I believe it was in Atlanta. The guy's name is Jay Dishman. This, is, this has been a while. But uh, he talks about how, you know, they're the, probably the greatest prisons that there have ever been are actually the prisons of our minds. Our minds being the thoughts that we take. And it takes great courage to renew your mind. And so he talks about, you know, habits are prisons where the doors are open and there are no locks and escape is encouraged. You know, any habit that you have can be changed. Anything in your life can be changed by simply changing the ideas that you have and have the courage to believe them, let go, and let God do the result. But you have to be specific in some of the things I've talked about. You have to be courageous is what I want to talk about today. And you know, uh, this Jay Dishman said, the sad fact is that more people are confined by their thoughts than are freed by them. Negative thinking shuts us in a prison, but there is a way out. You know, Paul in the Bible talks about, Be ye transformed, therefore, by the renewing of your mind. You know, if there was anyone that knew a lot about prisons, that would have to be Paul. Physical prisons and mental prisons. It took tremendous courage for Paul to start singing in the midst of a jail, and look what happened. I mean, it, it, his life, he's, you know, the greatest probably writer of the, of the New Testament, written more books. It takes great courage to renew your mind and stand on God's Word. Think about Joshua back when the Israelites, you know, were going into the Promised Land, and <clears throat> they all went out, and it took huge courage to look at these giants in the land and come back with a good report and say, we can take these guys. The Lord is with us. The land is ours. It's beautiful. Huge grapes. Big homes that we didn't build. Wells we didn't dig. Vineyards we didn't plant. All this is ours. But that was only, I believe, two people. And the rest of them gave a very negative report. And what happened? They each had an image. The vast majority took that image of we were, you know, one of the reports was we were as grasshoppers in their eyes. How do they know what they were thinking? They didn't talk to them, but they came back and with their imagination envisioned how they looked at them. But the reality was those giants were terrified of the Israelites, but they never knew it until later. And you know what? Courage, because the Lord told Joshua, only be strong and very courageous. He told them, you know, these books of the law, these words shall not depart out of your mouth, and in them you'll meditate day and night, then you'll have good success. Why is that? Because the images in the Bible, the words, are so powerful, and they're very strong images that when you get this idea in your mind, then you can get it down in your heart through space repetition and belief and excitement. Get emotional about believing in God's Word. You know, it, it takes tremendous courage to not bow down and worship somebody and then getting thrown in the lion's den. You know, but there are great, great rewards for those who stand on God's word and are courageous. You know, it takes a lot of courage to look at an empty bank account and believe that Jesus redeemed you from poverty. You know, that we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he became poor at the cross. So we, through his poverty, might have 
great riches, exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. It takes great courage to think that you should have a change in jobs or vocations to spend more time with your family. Well, all of that takes great courage. If you can find the verses and stand and meditate on those verses, you will get that courage. Faith comes. How does it come? It comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of Christ. You know, you'll never have great faith by renewing your mind on the Ten Commandments, you'll, you know, because you'll feel condemned by it. There's no, you need to bring Jesus out of the situation to have great courage. You know, if someone were to think of the story of Abraham when he took Isaac up and was offered him on the, uh, offered him, you know, as a sacrifice, if you don't bring Jesus out of that situation, you might think, well, the Lord will take something very important from me and he'll take it. No. That was a foreshadowing of what God would do for us. He didn't put Abraham through what he was willing to do. Because Abram had two sons. He didn't have one son. But he said, take your son, the son that you love, your only son, the son that you love. That wasn't his only son. He had another son by another woman. That was talking about what God was willing to do for us. God took his son his only son, the son that he loved, and he allowed him to come down and free us, you know, and that there is a prison in our minds that you can only break through. The only, you can't do it by positive thought, you can't do it by ignoring it, you have to take God's word, stand on it. You don't have to be a genius, take one verse. Miracles will happen with that. You know, one of my favorite quotes, and this is not in the Bible, but it's by Theodore Roosevelt. But I love this, and I've had it memorized, I don't know, for 20 years probably. But it's far better it is to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, though checkered with failure, than it is to rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy much nor suffer much because they live in that great twilight that knows neither victory nor defeat. I want you to put your hope in the Lord. You know, we're talking about prisons in, in our minds. There's a lot of that imagery in the Bible. It says, because of the blood of the covenant, I've, re I've released the prisoners from the pit where there is no water. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare, I will restore double unto you. There's a prison that people are in, and it's not a physical prison anymore. It is a prison in their minds. I encourage you to renew your mind by leaning on God's word. Stand on his verses. Be strong and very courageous, not in and of yourself, but in the belief that God will do what he said he will do. And then you can stand and see this great thing that the Lord will do before your eyes. God bless you. I'm expecting a miracle for you today.